Well, howdy again, everybody. I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about reclaiming pasture. And this is 140 acres that adjoins me that the owners are letting me use. And my goal is to improve it while I'm using it. And it is loaded with goat weed which is this weed here. I don't know the scientific name of it. I'll see if I can find out. And then these horrible clumps of what I call rosin weed. And you can see they're just, you look down in there and nothing grows where this, this weed is. And they grow in these big clumps and they absolutely take over the pasture. I mean, this whole thing will be 100% rosin weed or whatever it's actually called and that I don't know this section this whole 140 acres except for a little bit was cleared about 10 years ago and they dozed all the big trees and the brush and pushed them up in piles and burned them and this yopon y-a-u-p-o-n is growing back everywhere and so I want to talk to you a little bit about what I'm doing to reclaim this. Obviously, this is kind of in the woods now, so I won't be working on this segment in a while. But I want you to see what I've done thus far. So stay tuned. So when you're dealing with a massive project like this and you call yourself a regenerative rancher, sometimes you have to make some concessions to yourself in order to get started. And I don't know of any other way to try to get this going other than to come in here and kill the weeds. You'll have to excuse goose. Goose is happy to be running. And so I want to show you the progression of what I've done. So this is weeds, this rosin weed, that I sprayed with Graze On Next last week. You can see it's nodding good, really starting to wilt. And this is the only way I know to get started. There's zero other control measure, measures that I can think of that will help me get a hold of this. And so, I have sprayed these weeds. Now, where I just showed you where the weeds are still actively growing, I couldn't get in there with my spray rig. And so, and so I'll have to work on it piece by piece over the next couple of years. But this was sprayed last week, and you can see... These weeds are dying. That little clump doesn't look like it's dying, but most of this other is. Goat weeds. These yellow flowers are dying. Everything's starting to go. And I'm gonna show you what happens over the course of a couple of weeks as all this stuff dies. So let me move to a different spot. So this is what I sprayed the week before and the same weed is really starting to take a hit now no growth starting to wilt down it's gonna die and in these areas where I have pockets of bahia grass and other grasses already started that grass can start to express itself and start to grow and the interesting thing or the thing that's really important is that the weed competition can be so severe the grass doesn't have a chance so as i am able to control these weeds it's like adding fertilizer to the grass that's already there meaning you decrease the competition for sunlight for nutrients and this grass can start to express itself and the nice thing about the bahia grass is it is a prolific seed producing plant and it can go ahead and 
produce seed now and then that seed will start to um, start to germinate in these areas where there was bare soil now let me show you the next progression this section of the pasture I sprayed four weeks ago I've got a good kill that was littered with goat weed that you can't even see any goat weed remaining it's all decomposed and you truly can't believe how you can actually even get around in here it was so dense you couldn't hardly walk in it and as we progress onto the grass here i want to tell you that this area almost as dense as the weeds where we first started tall the grass was totally shaded out couldn't express itself and the seeds couldn't grow um, and or any little clumps of grass that were there they just kind of languished you can see still we have dead areas that aren't growing any grass yet but it's starting to come back and you can see the remnant of last year's rosin weed i've killed all out all the new growth but you can see the stalks that remain from last year and these things will get five foot six foot tall and you just absolutely can't drive through them much less try to walk through them and so this time next year i would propose that this will totally look like this over here there was a lot of this rosin weed here and let me show you what these clumps start to do they start to fill in with some kind of repair grass that's a different grass than bahia or at least some of that is i don't know what that is but look at this clump really starting to come on with some grass so that grass can get the nutrition it needs it can get the sunlight it needs and these places start to fill in so really truly tickled with this project one thing that i would tell you is that depending on your locale you may have to um, purchase seed and reseed it the, the wonderful thing about Bahia that I like is it's a prolific reseeder um, you may have to um, plant coastal sprigged coastal or some hybrid Bermuda grass but whatever it takes it's worth it and the trade-off is that I had to get ahead of this with with weed spray which again is against the regenerative ranching principles but um, I just don't have another way that I can think of that's going to make this happen and so we're going to take some very useless land from the perspective of livestock and we're going to make it be useful to produce protein and meat and replacement seed stock and it's going to be awesome so i want to show you 20 acres that i've been working on at the front of this place for about two years and show you the transformation there so hang on for one more quick clip so last but not least i want to show you this front pasture and looking across uh, to the west here that bahia grass is really coming on strong and there was lots of dead spots like this that just total weeds and the grass just couldn't express itself and you can see a clump there that's starting to come on another little clump there and this will gradually fill in until it looks like this this is about oh, 15 or 20 acres down through there that was so weedy that the grass just couldn't do what it needed to do and it's coming on strong now and so killing the weeds certainly is an option when you're in a situation like this where they're just overpowering the the acreage and you just can't get ahead of them threading them is an option um, that you can use for sure but it doesn't kill those weeds out and so um, or at least the perennial weeds they can they'll keep growing so 
I think that's what we've done here is best for this, my particular concern. We had shredded this last year and they came, they all came back again this year. And so we've made a remarkable difference in this front pasture, um, growing a lot of grass that'll be very useful to me. So always these tough decisions we have to make, um, whether we want country like this that's useless country like that so that's useful and once we get a jump start on the weeds well then the grass can take over and and out compete the weeds this bahia grass develops a thick matted root and the weeds absolutely can't grow grow through it hardly once it's established so just some food for thought hope this helps you make some decisions for your property and have a great day thanks for riding along with me Take care.